by far the coolest class that EC3 has to offer. All right, so we're actually we're actually stationed over at the college, okay? So when you take my class, and you can take this class as a freshman, okay? Uh, so when you take my class, they'll actually bus you over to the college, which is next door. All right, and, and we got a big shop there, and that, that's where we learn at. And, and so uh, the first class you take with me in, in building stretch and technology pathway, the first class you take with me is called Intro to Construction. All right, you learn how to use hand tools and power tools. All right, how many of you used a hammer before? Raise your hands. Oh, then you guys are awesome. All right, how many of you used a drill before? Oh, then you guys will be far above beyond everybody else already. All right, so use use hand drills and uh, 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 like I said, uh, you will use hand drills, power drills. You use table saws, uh, uh, circular saws, jigsaw, all these different tools that you see on a construction job site. You'll actually use those uh, in our class, and, and then after you figure out how to use them and use them properly and safely, we start building small little projects. Uh, all right, like the stool that's behind you. Uh, you'll be able to store like that, and you'll take it home, and, and you'll be able to birdhouse, and you'll take that home, or a small toolbox, or, or shelf, or just some small little projects that, uh, that you feel comfortable building. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll do that in, inside the, the, class, uh, the shop there. All right, that's the first class you take. The second class you take is carpentry. It, what's a carpenter do? You might know. All right, he builds things. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He builds things. All right. So inside our shop, he builds houses and so forth. All right. So inside our shop, you will actually build a build a, You will actually build a, a tiny house. All right. Just a small little house. You'll build a floor. You'll build walls. Uh, you'll put windows and doors in it. You'll put a roof on it and the ceiling in it. You guys will do all that work, uh, and you'll you'll actually build a house inside our, our shop. So you'll you'll learn learn how to build things. All right. Uh, and the third class you take with me is, is electricity. And so everything inside your house, you'll know how to wire. So the receptacles that you plug your phone charger into, light switches, lights, uh, as, exhaust fans, smoke detectors, electrical panels, all those things, there, there is nothing inside your house that Noah can't, can't wire, okay? He's, he, he can make lights come on on this side of the room and turn them off on the other side of the room. Yeah, there, literally, there's nothing inside your house he can't, he can't wire because he's, he's taking the class. Right, and the fourth class you take with me is uh, uh, HVAC and plumbing. So you learn about your hot and cold water and your sewage, and you learn about your heating and air inside your house. And whenever you're done with me, uh, whenever you're done taking uh, my, the, my, the construction pathway, uh, then you'll, you'll, you'll actually understand the different trades that's involved in construction and, and possibly get an interest in going into a career like that. So, so tell me, Tell me, is anybody interested in going into construction? It's fine if you're not. All right, no, no, all right. That's, that's a few of you. All right, there is so much good money that that you can make in construction. All right, no, you will not get your pilot's license here, but you will get drone certification, which makes you legally be able to get money off of a drone. Freshman year is basically the intro and the basics. It's your types of aircraft, the history of aviation, going all the way from Greek mythology all the way up to the space program. Some of the things that you do to help get this is you build a hot air balloon and fly that outside, of course. And you start learning about your basic flight principles, which is your four, which is your four different directions of flight, which is your thrust, lift, weight, and drag. And then with that, you go in and you really learn about that and everything that can affect that in your sophomore year in Aviation 1. And then from there, you, re you actually earn your commercial drone, your commercial drone certificate in your junior year in Aviation 170, which that's what the course is geared to. And then after that, in your, se in your senior year, you have Aviation 150 and Aviation 250. We build airfoils in here, we put them on, we'll set a scale in there, and put some weights on the airfoil. It, you know, we just turn it on. It's the one, it's the one tunnel, you turn it on, and as you'll see, if the airfoil is put properly, the weight will show how the weight decreases in here. And you turn it on to see how effective it works. If it works real effectively, then it may just you know, fly off. 
So I'll go more into do what we're doing this year. We're this class is sophomore. So what we start off is we learn about how your your temperature and humidity and temperature, humidity, and altitude can affect your flight parameters. So how it could be how fast you could fly, how much lift you can produce, and other stuff like that. You also learn more about how you classify, how aircraft are classified. Like you have an aircraft like that that's supposed to be modeling Cessna, which is a single rotor aircraft. Then you have multi rotor and dual rotor. And then you also have your different types. You also have piston and turbine aircraft. You start out with your freshman freshman core, uh, core class, which would be intro to engineering. Uh, we call that one the boring class, kind of because it's base, it's just your basic geometry and algebra, and then the science of it, and then all the energies of the world that are used in engineering. Uh, then your sophomore year, uh, what you do is is you would get to reverse engineer something, where you take a real life object, you tear it apart, you measure it completely, and you'd put it into a 3D modeling program where you can show that. Here, right here I have a sword that I have made that I put onto a 3D modeling program where I could either print it out on a 3D printer or I could use this big blue CNC machine back here. Uh, the big blue CNC machine, uh, it takes a block of wood and then, car then carves it out. Right here he, ha he has one of the things that we have carved out of the big blue CNC machine. It does not squeak anymore because he's done that so many times. Come on, it's not squeaking. If you guys want to pass this around, you can make all different things with it. Yeah, you can make. Uh, Mr. Nagel made made them do uh, yo-yos last year. Uh, but after you do, after you get past your your first, your sophomore year class, you come here for your junior class where you work with uh, electrical engineering and you work with breadboards using cir using circuits to power electronics. Where you would take, where you take a circuit, turn on a light, turn on a sensor, uh, and other cool electronics. But this is the precursor of what you would be doing. Uh, what you'd be doing in that class mainly would be learning how to solder. This, this right here in my hand is a soldering iron. This is what you use to solder. It takes metal and basically melts it, melts it to where a wire will stick to a motherboard. Uh, this is hotter than your stove at home or your oven at home. This gets up to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But then after your, jun your junior class, uh, you can come back, you get to come back here uh, and take the senior class, uh, which finishes up it. Or you can even add on to it with mechanical and civil engineering. Uh, mechanical is where, the mechanical class is where you get to actually use the big blue CNC machine. And also where you get, uh, well, you get to learn about gear ratios where say big gear small powers small gear or small gear powers big gear, one equals, one equals torque, one equals speed, depending on which way you put the gear. Uh, then in the civil class, they do more of construction, uh, where they learn how to design buildings. And basically, we call that the architect class, because that's where all the architects want to be. Uh, and then you get back to your senior class that you finish up. There is a way to skip the senior class to finish this. What you can do is you can do co-op. Co-op is a class where you, actu where you actually go out into the real world and you make money doing what you learned in this class. Uh, and whenever you do co-op, it would be the last three classes of the day where basically you would not have to come to school at all. You'd go out and work and not even have to be at school. What is the academy? So it's an early college program that you can complete in your high school career. So it means that it starts at the beginning of your junior year and it ends at the end of your senior year to where when you graduate, you can graduate with your associate's degree. So what's going to be different from academy versus your home high school? So here at academy, you're going to get a better use of personal responsibility and you're going to find you get better time management here. So um, what you all are used to in your middle schools and what you're going to be used to in your home high school is your teachers handing you your work, spoon feeding it to you. This is how your work needs to be done, you know, it needs to be in by this time, and then after that, they're on you about getting your work turned in. Well, here that's not really the case. After you get out of a lecture-based class, you know, your teacher will maybe have an assignment to do, and you might not. It's kind of how that professor sets up that class for you. So you need to be able to be responsible and get that done on your own. Another big thing, you're not, you're not gonna be at your home high school as much, but you can always go back and you can take extracurriculars, electives, classes, clubs, sports, any of the above. Because yes, you're in academy, 
but you're still a student at John Harden North Harden Central Harden. So this is the Health Science Pathways. Um, if you look to this room, this is Ms. Bowman. She teaches principles of health science. It is one of the four prerequisite courses you have to take in order to get into the capstone classes. In this class, you will learn about the history of health science and how it's evolved over time. Behind you all is Mr. Witzel's room. He teaches emergency procedures and medical terminology. In emergency procedures, you basically learn how to help someone in an emergency situation and how to do CPR and all of that. And then in medical terminology, you basically learn how to interpret medical words. And then the last prerequisite course you would take in your junior year, it is anatomy. You can either take it here or at your home school. In that class, you basically learn everything about the body, like the structures, how it functions, and so forth. And then you will dissect an animal in that class. Um, I think she says she dissected a pig in hers. I dissected a cat in my class. And, and it's important to do your best in these classes because in order to get to the capstone, classes, they look at your grades, your attendance, and your behavior, so it's very important to take those prerequisite courses seriously. So our pathway, we are a cinematography and videography pathway. Does anybody know what that means? Cinematography and videography. Anybody? Anybody? Take a look around. What do you see? Cameras, we're filming, we're recording, right? So that's what we deal with in here, all right? Our different, we've got some cameras set up uh, that we'll kind of try to let you take a look at before you head off to your next stop, all right? So we, uh, the folks that are in here right now, they're in their second level, so they're taking the dual credit. They're taking college level class, learning about film, right? How to make a short film, how to write a short film, and put, do stuff like that. All right, we deal with film. We, we deal with filmography. Uh, as an intro student, which is what you all would come in as, you start out with uh, one of your first projects is a photography project. So we get you a digital camera. You take some, go out and take photos, try to set up a nice shot, make sure that it's going to look good. What does photography and film have in common? They deal with cameras. What else? What are, what are videos made up of? Moving pictures. Moving pictures, right? So in, if you're filming with your cell phone, the frames per second, it's usually set at 30 frames per second, which means you get 30 pictures for every second of video that you're filming, right? That's a lot of pictures that, that you start putting together. So knowing how to set up a nice uh, photography shot will help you to set up a good shot for filming as well. We work hand-in-hand uh, -hand with HCEC-TV, which is our district channel. Uh, anybody here in band? A couple of people. So last month you had a band concert, most likely, right? Win winter or Christmas concert. We were there filming that, right? We film basketball games, football games, the choir shows, the musicals. We do all of that stuff. So part of the class as well is for you to go out and film some of those events for HCEC-TV. All right, so we use all kinds of different equipment uh, in here. We're using part of our filming part. Anybody know what this is? It's a microphone, right? What is this on? It's on a stick, on a stand, it's on a pole, right? So this is a boom pole. It's a boom mic. So if I am filming a scene between these two guys here, I could hold this above them. Right? And then as they are talking, my microphone is picking it up instead of me having to wear one of these. Right? So that, that's somebody's job. In that these, these folks in here, they've, they have done a scene already. Uh, they're getting ready to do another one. They're going to be using the microphones, using the equipment to set up a shot, make sure that they film it and capture the right audio. Right, and the right look for all of it. What we are in right now is computer programming. We do web development. Information support services, network administration, and network security. Um, so AP Computer Science Principles is what we're in right now. It's called um, CSP. Um, it's basically just basic, basic Python, basic coding. If you look around, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, web development, making websites, 
stuff like that. Cybersecurity is growing right now, especially in computational computer whatever. Okay. <laughs> Digital literacy. This one's taken at your home school, so your high school. Um, the hardest one right now is compute computational thinking. Yes, and that one is. Um, you get to pick what you want to do, basically. Like, if you want to make video games, stuff like that. Um, network administration. Um, taking out your homeschool as well. Uh, learn the basic of networking and then... <laughs> enter. You'll notice that there are a lot of similar classes in a lot of these courses, too. Um... Network security, this one's very popular right now. Um, you can see how much money they make with the possible careers, it's a lot of money. And some of these jobs are straight out of high school, so straight out of high school you're making $80,000, you know. Um, information support and services, um, you get real world experience by working in the IT industry, which is co-op, pretty sure you do that like in school still, it's like working. Um, this is taken on your home school. Um, a lot of certificates come with it. IT specialist, HTML, CSS, it specialist, JavaScript. Um, learn the basics of computer hardware and software, including hands-on experiences with building computers. So if you like that stuff. Uh, you take this class your sophomore to senior year. Sophomore year is what it sounds like. It's a basic automotive class, it's third block. So when you come, you first two weeks or uh, two weeks in the classroom just safety tests all around after that when you come into the shop you start to get more hands-on class uh, for your first thing you do in the shop is you learn to change tires classrooms 50 50 so it's 50 percent shop 50 percent classroom time uh, when you get out here you basically like I said you look, first thing you do is you learn how to change tires and then you learn how to work your lifts uh, as you can see we got a lot of cool trainers right through here I'll explain those here in a minute <coughs> Uh, senior year, you take an ASE certification test, which makes you a certified mechanic. So uh, everybody you see in the shop right now are certified mechanics. We can all go to any dealership, any shop here in Hardin County and get jobs as mechanics. Uh, as you get certified, what it is, it's 10 tests total. You have to pass the MLR test, and that's the only test you have to pass with a 51%. So the more tests you pass, the higher your certification is. Like I passed 7 out of 10, but Trent passed 10 out of 10, so his certification is a little bit higher than mine. Uh, he's just certified for a couple more things than me, like manual transmissions, just little things like that. Uh, so whenever you come in here, you can look around. We have tire changers on both sides of the shop. We do use those kind of often. We have four post and two post lifts. Uh, we use the four post lifts mainly for heavier trucks or alignment rack pretty much. So what it is, when you do an alignment on a vehicle, it shines lasers through these uh, scanners and it'll tell you what you need to tighten and what you need to loosen for an alignment. Uh, your two post lifts are going to be mainly used for your engine swaps or if you get into changing transmissions, oil pans like the GMC behind us, we're changing oil pan on it. So we have to pull the transmission out to put an oil pan in. You'll learn things like that. Mr. Pitt's really good about giving you service manuals too. You'll have service uh, data on your phone. So you'll be able to look things up and it'll tell you exactly what to loosen and what's tight and to do things. Uh, as you look to my left, y'all's right, you'll see an electrical trainer behind them. So that electrical trainer, you do use that a lot your sophomore year. You learn to wire headlights, taillights, brake lights, turn signals, ignition switch, just like that. So a uh, very cool thing is uh, about the automotive industry is if you want higher education, and a lot of places would like you to have it, they pay for it. So I work at Boyd Cat. They pay for all my college. I'm going to Illinois for two months. I come home for two months. I do that for two years. I get an associate's degree in science. Pretty cool. No, no, all I owe is my gas to get there and get home. That's all I owe while I'm there. And then you got schools like Braden, which isn't basically school, it's just hands-on work, but he gets certified for doing the hands-on training. Then you got school like Trenton here. Uh, it's in Laramie, Wyoming. I'm gonna let him explain it a little bit. So like you said, I'm going to Laramie, Wyoming, <laughs> a place called Wyotech. Graduated in nine months, and there's a couple different, uh, couple different options you can choose from for which pathway you wanna go down. There's a regular automotive class where you work on uh, gas internal combustion engines, stuff like that. There's high performance powertrains, so you can build like drag cars, race cars, anything like that. I'm going into the heavy duty uh, diesel side, so I'll be out working on semis and stuff. There's a bunch of different places in there that you can go to that'll lead you out to, with really good certifications to get a really good job afterwards. ECTC offers a two-year program too for heavy diesel and automotive. 
Theirs is a two year program about like what I'm doing, but theirs is an everyday five day class for two years. You do get an associate's degree in science, I think. It's just applied science. But the cool thing about that is, is you always have a degree to fall back on. If you decide in 10 years you don't want to be a mechanic, you're going to have something to fall back on. Uh, back behind us is our intro kids. They're in the kitchen at least one time a week. Today they're cooking out chicken alfredo for their assignment. Um, culinary one's in the kitchen for two periods. And then third period, they go across the hall for their Surf Safe certification class. Um, culinary two is in the kitchen through all three periods. And then fourth and fifth, we're back at our home schools. Behind y'all is a walk-in fridge. Behind me is our dry storage area. You can walk around. This is our leftover cooler. Uh, whatever we use, like yesterday we made peach cobbler. So we keep that in there, we keep a date on there, and then when it goes old, we'll throw it out. This is our produce sink. The health department is very specific about where we get our water from for washing stuff, boiling stuff, and draining stuff. This is the sink that we use. This is our raw meat cooler. This is our meat slicer. It is what it sounds like. It slices meat and yeah. Above is our pots, pans, meat grinders, mixers, and waffle irons. Iron. This is our dishwasher. You run it through, it goes like 30 seconds. It's very efficient, that's why we use this one. These are our ovens back here. This is where Intro is cooking their chicken and boiling their pasta. Over here, this is our, um, it's a really big oven. No, you cannot walk into it. Um, over here, this is our baked goods, so all of our seasonings and stuff like that. And then right here is our, uh, it's our pizza oven. Right here is a called a crest core. You'll open it up and we have caterings, which is events where we cook it and we serve it to people. Um, we put it in there and it heats up faster than our regular oven would. This is our seasoning because we can't have stuff without seasoning. I suggest that you do intro here at EC3 because you get hands-on experience in our kitchen and you get to know where stuff is. Um, then you can go through all four levels. You can take food and nutrition at your home school and that will put you as a sophomore into culinary one. Um, we do eat what we do what we make um, we get handed a recipe and that's our assignment for the day most times um, we do a lot of caterings and then this is the criminal justice pathway it is a class offered at John Harden High School but it is a pathway through EC3 so if you are not going to end up going to John Harden High School you can be bused from your home school to John to take this class I drive there since I'm old enough to drive but most kids who go from my school take the bus so your intro class is one of four classes that you will take. You will learn about your constitutional rights as a person and how you can lose them. You will go into the court systems, what types of cases go to courts, and who is all in the courtrooms. Then you will also do juvenile justice. That is basically you guys. Everyone here in the room under the age of 18 is a juvenile. So basically, if you've committed a crime or not, you are a juvenile. There's something called status offenses for us. So that's something we cannot do under the age of 18. So say we run away or we are truant, which means we don't show up to school enough. We can get in a lot of trouble. Our parents will pay a hefty fine and we will go to juvenile detention. But truancy has a weird exception. If you are 18 and still in high school, you will go to jail if you are truant too much. You will not go with, with your peers to juvenile detention who are also going for truancy. You'll go to jail with people who have committed like felonies and who are also twice your age. Second part is corrections. Personally, that's one of my favorites because you get to get to learn the background benefits of knowing how the prison system works. There's three types of prison systems. There's maximum security, where the worst of the worst goes, and you get to learn about how foreign countries treat their criminals. For Denmark, they have more rehabilitation. It's more like you become a citizen by acting like a citizen during your day-to-day -day life, and they give them more freedom and will to do more things. Instead of America, we have more punishable offenses. We like to believe, do the time if you do the crime. Um, then towards the final part of it, it's a Minecraft prison project that you take two, two and a half weeks. It's pretty fun. You can be very creative. I did an underwater prison project. People love me for that. They're like, oh my god, this is the best one we had in a few months, in the years, you know. I'm very proud of myself. She did something boring and lame. She also did, I think she did rehabilitation, right? You can do whatever you want. Just follow the guidelines. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. Law enforcement is kind of the second hardest, in my opinion. Who likes working out or video games in this case? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, okay. A few, a few. Yeah, a lot of people, yeah. So, law enforcement shows you the physical aspects of being an officer and goes by through the history. And that class basically teaches you the mindset the officer has to be every day because they put their life on their line and you actually learn how to respect the more well qualified because it takes a lot. We have a similar that we do occasionally. It teaches you how to de-escalate a situation. I did bad my first time. I did horrible on a traffic stop. I was attacked because I could not understand how to stop the person from exiting out of his vehicle without my permission. Um, then one big thing people do not like on the first day is Wellness Wednesday. It's, it's basically P for every Wednesday you have to work out and do one of the standardized tests that each officer has to go through during their time of service. She hated it, I hated it, she also hated it, but she has also a great thing about that, you can make new friends. She has a new gym partner because of it. It's very great. You hate it at the beginning, but you start loving it at the end. One big thing everybody also enjoys how to properly handcuff people and you do it in a safely manner. Our very last class is criminal investigations. That class you could only end up taking as a senior. Uh, the first thing that we go over are types of investigations. The first one is the read method. That's where I'm gonna be aggressive. I'm gonna go ahead and accuse you as soon as I walk in there. If I need to, I'll let you stay in there for a couple hours and I'll just leave. Um, Cause then your lies are not gonna end up being straight. Um, the next is the peace method. That's where I'm gonna end up trying to be your very, very best friend to make sure that you trust me. Um, from there, you'll probably end up telling me more things even if you are not trying to. Um, a couple of the tasks that we go over are fingerprint lifting and analyzing, drawing crime scenes, processing evidence, and photographing crime scenes. Uh, me and Delaney are currently in this class, and a couple days ago our teacher had set up a crime scene for us. Um, it was us and three other people, and we only got five minutes to go through it. Um, and all we, we had four potential murder weapons, or weapons, and then um, just one severed prosthetic hand, and that's all we had to work for. Um, during this class, you do Skills USA competition. That's where our teacher picks a couple people to go ahead and go for us. Um, that's a national competition we did last year. We got district for it in 2023, and then we got second in state. Um, we go through and take a test for it and go over everything that we've covered in the pathway. And then we all do specialized tasks, and then we get put in a large crime scene with us and two other people uh, for 45 minutes instead of 10 to 12 police officers for hours. Um, and I guess we can go ahead and do handcuffing. Okay. This is your standard pair of double lock handcuffs. Right now, what Lorenzo has is the first unlock stage. So the second thing you do is you lock them shut and they will cl make a clicking noise. That means they're in their first stage of lock. There's two little holes on the top that we always want to click in just to make sure that they don't move. So like when they're double locked, they don't move and it saves you from either cutting through your hand with the cuffs if you start moving in the back of a cop car or if you're sitting on the ground and they get tighter. You could also end up cutting off your circulation. We don't want that to happen either because then we can be in a lot of trouble as well. So they're gonna go ahead and show you the proper arrest procedure and I'm gonna walk them through the steps. So you're gonna walk forward two steps. Yes, both of you are gonna listen to my instructions. Right there. Okay, you're gonna do a T-pose position with your hands facing down, so like this. Scare pro it. Hi, thank you, right there. Okay, then you are going to face your palms towards Emma and Lorenzo. So you're gonna face your palms backwards. And then after this, usually we would do a pat down, but for time's sake, we are not going to actually pat them down. Then you all are going to interlock your fingers on the back of your head. So you're gonna do this and put your hands on the back of your head. Then you are going to go down onto your knees and cross your ankles. It ain't happening. Get down. No, that's not happening. Stop resisting. Get down. Stop resisting. You, so yeah, that's so resisting. Can, Emma would have thrown him onto the ground if we were actual officers. Oh. oh, no. Okay, switch out. Somebody else. Get up here. Yeah, one of you. Just one. Just one, Just one guys. Okay. Uh, okay, now, go down onto go your knees down your and cross your ankles. Your ankles. For the camera purposes, his knees messed up. Forgot about that. He had surgery on it. He can't get down his knees. Okay, okay. then they're going to take their right hand. Leave your left hand on the back of your head and they're going to put the first cuff on. And then you're going to do the left hand. And then once they have both secured their cuffs and double locked them, you all are going to uncross your ankles and stand up. Okay, this is going to be the stupid part, is taking them out of the handcuffs. So, when you're taking them out of the handcuffs, you're going to bend over at your waist, acting like you were touching your toes with your head. Yep, it might look stupid, but it is the proper way to unhandcuff somebody because one is for our safety and two, it makes it easier for us to get you out of the cuffs. And it just makes it so where if you try to run, yeah, if he tries to run, all we have to do is kick you right here and you're gonna fall on your face.